The Lord is calling our son, can you hear me now? Stop the look, the walls are crumbling down Pick it up, the stones are called to use One by one we surely understand That even burnt stones can be restored We see it now, the walls will rise again As the church unites, he will come again And as he comes, we'll sing and shout Now we will go and rise and rebuild And as he comes, we'll sing and shout Now we will go and rise and rebuild, yeah Now is the time Morning, church. Thanks for coming uh, early today to pray for the service today.
can I just invite you to stand uh, as we, you know, commit this time to God's hands. No matter how your week has been, you know, let's uh, come come together and let's let's focus our eyes on God. Uh, let's, uh, if you have the gift of tongues, let's pray in the Spirit. If not, let's pray in understanding. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for this morning that we can just gather in your name, God. Lord, thank you, God, for providing this place. Thank you, God, for providing an online platform, God, for us to just also, uh, you know, broadcast this service uh, online as well, God. Lord, I just pray, God, that even as we... uh, as even as we come today to, to worship you and to learn from your word together, God, Lord, I just pray, God, that, Lord, it will not be out of routine, oh God, or out of obligation or out of any sort of expectations, oh God, but we're here, God, uh, just because we want uh, to be in your presence, oh God, just because we want to see you today, oh God. Lord, so, oh God, I just pray, God, that, Lord, you fill this room with your presence, oh God. Pray, Lord, that anyone that comes into this place, God, be able to feel a tangible presence, oh God. Whether they are going through uh, a difficult week or a good week, oh God, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that Lord will be able to just uh, uh, put all those aside, oh God, but focus our eyes and attention on you today, oh God. Lord, I just pray, God, that Lord also, as Pastor Dave is preaching today, oh God, I just pray, Lord, even as he preaches to God, Lord, you, you make our heart uh, good ground to receive your word, oh God. Just pray, Lord, the, the, the words, uh, the word that we hear from you today, oh God, will not just be a, a, a like passing wind, oh God, but Lord, we'll, we'll take it into our hearts, oh God, and just apply it into our daily lives as well, God. Just pray, Lord, that Lord, continue to uh, anoint Pastor Dave oh God, as, as he preaches your word uh, to, to your people, oh God. Lord, we just want to pray, God, for the different ones that are serving today, oh God, uh, whether it's uh, in X worship X sound X, uh, X hospitality X host and so on, oh God, Lord. There's so many things that, that's happening behind the scenes, oh God, but Lord, I pray, God, for all these very, uh, very dedicated individuals who have set aside their Sunday morning to serve you. But I pray, Lord, that Lord, you continue to anoint them, oh God. They continue to bless them, oh God, even as they serve your kingdom, oh God. I just pray, Lord, that Lord, uh, even as we serve, oh God, I just pray, Lord, you help us, oh God, to serve with clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. Lord, we just we just want to serve, oh God, because we want to bless your name, oh God, and not because we want to, uh, bec- it's not because we want to look good or not because we want to uh, do this of obligation, but just because we want to bless your name this morning, oh God. Lord, so we just commit this uh, service to your mighty hands, oh God. Just pray, Lord, that Lord, you will help us, oh God, to to, to run the service, not our, not on our, not just based on our own strength, oh God, but Lord, help us, oh God, to rely on you, God, even as, uh, even as we uh, run this service of God. Just pray, Lord, you be with us throughout the service of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In Acts, we are very fortunate to be part of a global network of churches that spread that spread across different continents. We have churches in uh, UK, in Asia, in, in, ex- in Africa, in Australia, and so on. You know, uh, all these churches are our sister church plants. And, you know, just as they pray for us, we also want to pray for them. So with the list of church plants that's flashed in front of you, let's pick a church plant and let's uh, pray that, you know, God will continue to use these church plants for His glory. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for entrusting uh, these different church plants into our hands, oh God. Lord, I pray, God, even as um, 
even as we, 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 we even as this different church plants that serve you, God, we just pray, Lord, that Lord, you continue to strengthen the leadership, oh God, in each of these churches, oh God. Just pray, Lord, that Lord, the leaders will continue to hunger for your vision, oh God. And it's, even as they hunger for your vision, oh God, I just pray, Lord, that Lord, the, the, the members in, in these respective churches will, con- will, will be united under one banner, oh God, to, to pursue your kingdom together, God, not as separate individuals, but as one, uh, one, one unit, oh God. Lord, I just pray, God, that Lord, also you, you make... Um, you, you, you continue to make make those uh, different communities around these churches good ground, God, to for for your for your ministry, oh God. Just pray, Lord, that a lot of different communities will be touched, oh God. Different communities will come to know you, God. Whether they are they, they've had a bad past, or whether different individuals might have a bad past, or they might be struggling, or they might be you know. Um, Sub, uh, subjected to poverty and so on, God. Whatever it is, oh God, I just pray, Lord, use these churches, oh God, to, to reach out to the different communities uh, as well, God. Lord, we want to commit all of these church plants in your mighty hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Now pass the time to worship team. Morning, church. You know, even this morning, I believe God uh, is just going to do a new thing uh, today. So why not let's just prepare our hearts and open our hearts to receive from Him this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, give you all the praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Feeling. 
situation you're going through, why don't you just trust in God and just surrender it to Him? Even just come and just worship Him and just surrender all your worries, all your doubts at His feet. Because He will come, He will accept you, He will He will pick up the pieces.
to tell you that I need you, Jesus, Lord of all. I will look back and see that you are faithful. I look ahead, believing you are able, Jesus. Just surrender it all to Him. Oh, just give Him your heart. All your cares, all your burdens, just put it at His feet. Jesus, Christ. all my cares on you.
miles and pain lift up my head what a great sun ending your eyes like a flame of fire watch over me i'm surrounded by your love jesus surrounded by your love jesus sing it out son of god son of god holy and righteous let my Wanna live a life like you did. Wanna be just like you, Jesus, King of Majesty. I wanna see the world. I wanna see the world through your eyes. I wanna live a life like you. the world I want to see the world through your eyes I want to live a life like you did I want to be just like you Jesus King of majesty Son of God righteous let my heart bring praise to you alone forever my lord king of majesty son of god son of god holy and righteous let my the king of majesty you're the king of majesty oh hallelujah Lord. you're the king of kings Jesus. hallelujah let's give god another shout of praise amen hallelujah. amen hallelujah. amen amen please be seated my name is justin now be your chairperson today 
on behalf of Acts Church, I would like to welcome all of you to church this morning. Let's take a, a, a moment to welcome a very special group of people. So for those of you who are visiting us for the first or second time, you are our guests of honour. And for those of you who are tuning in online and are new, do drop a line in the chat below so that we can welcome you and tell you more about X Church UK. But for the rest of us, uh, let's look around and see if there are any new friends. And let's welcome uh, in the count of three at where you're seated. One, two, three. We look forward to tithes and offering because we want to worship God by giving our best in every area of our lives. If you are new here today and, and are not comfortable with this, uh, you, you do not need to give into the offering. So you can give into the offering with two ways. The first way is to give into the box that's right beside me. And alternatively, you can also give uh, with the bank account details slash behind me. So prepare to give as I lead you in reading of scripture. In Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10, it says, Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. And dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for everything that you've given to us from the jobs that we have, uh, from uh, the whatever that we're studying, uh, from, uh, from even the finances provided by our parents oh God, Lord, all this uh, it's from you, oh God Lord, I pray God that today, God that even as we give into the offering back, oh God uh, I just pray, Lord, that Lord uh, you help us, oh God, to, to uh, rely less on money or less on uh, material things oh God, but to rely more on you, oh God uh, for our day-to-day -day lives oh God, so Lord, I pray, Lord, you use this offering, oh God, uh, for the furtherance of, of your kingdom Pray, Lord, you give the leaders the wisdom, of oh God, to use this uh, to, 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 uh, to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you want to give physically, the box is on my left. Cool. Let's give with a cheerful heart. While, uh, while we're giving, a uh, couple of announcements for you. First announcement is that um, you know, some of you here might have been attending church a while now and you might be wondering, how can I, you know, how can I be part of this awesome community? So, wow, Homes is where you want to be and it's happening this Wednesday. So, Homes, for, for those of you who don't know, Homes is where we gather in small groups uh, where we fellowship and do Bible study discussions together. So, if you'd like to join a Homes group near you, please feel free to either approach me or, or one of the leaders after the service. So how many, how many of you here are excited for Getaway? Can I see a show of hands? Cool. So get, Getaway is a once-in-a-year event where we set aside one weekend to just uh, worship God and learn from the Word together from specially curated workshops. So if you're interested, it will be £90 per person and you can sign up through the link projected on the screen behind me. I believe there's a QR code and you can just scan it to sign up. We're getting advanced. <laughs> uh, okay, water baptism is something we do as believers and where we are given the opportunity to publicly declare our faith, especially to our friends and family. So this may be of particular interest uh, for some of you here, especially if you've been attending church and, and have even stayed the sinner's prayer. So if, if water baptism is something that you'd like to find out more, please speak to one of our leaders uh, or me as well. And uh, next one, so, uh, you know, for some of you, you've been trying to invite your friends on Sunday mornings and you know that it's difficult and it's challenging, right? But as ex we want to say that we've got your back. And so, so in, in response to that, we are having second service from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. So do invite your friends to join us for a powerful time of worship and just learning from the Word together. 
Alright, so that's it for announcements. And uh, you know, in Acts, we want to be there for you during your lows and your highs. And in particular, we want to celebrate birthdays. So just wondering if anyone is celebrating their birthdays this coming week. So Celine, Celine, and Wei, Wei Jin is celebrating their birthdays. Aaron and Aaron celebrating their birthdays. So, anyone else? And for, for those of you who are tuning in online, we didn't forget you. So, please, you know, drop a line in the chat below so that we can reach out to you and wish you a happy birthday as well. So, anyone else celebrating your birthdays? Want to volunteer someone to celebrate their birthdays? <laughs> okay, cool. Can we have the last line of happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Pray that this will be your best year yet. Amen. Right now, we want to take this time to pray for the salvation of our unsafe loved ones. You know, most of us here are believers, and you know, but there are many out there who have not come to know Christ. It could be a friend, a colleague, or even a family member. But you know, God, He gave His all, He sacrificed His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. So, you know, it. So it's, it's, not just, it's not just about religion, but it's also having a direct relationship with Him. So let's do our part, uh, you know, in spreading the good news, you know, who, who, no matter who that person might be. You know, let's believe that God has the right plan and timing prepared for them by committing their salvation uh, to Jesus. You know, let's take this time, maybe a minute or two, let's think of that person's name and let's, uh, let's, let's commit them to God and let's commit their salvation to God. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you, God, for the salvation that we enjoy in your name, oh God. Lord, thank you, God, for dying on the cross for our sins, that we can enjoy a life filled with hope, life filled with freedom. And Lord, all this is because you, you gave us your all, you gave us your son. So God, even as we uh, enjoy being in your presence, in your, uh, through your salvation, oh God, Lord, we want the same for our friends and family who have not come to know you, God. We pray, God, that, Lord, you use us, oh God, to reach out to them according to your will and to your perfect timing. I pray, God, that, Lord, you, you, you also uh, begin to minister to them, oh God, begin to speak to their hearts, oh God, so that they can open up to just, uh, just, just wanting to know you more, oh God. Lord, so I just commit the salvation of our friends and family into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, right now, we, can I just invite you to uh, stand on your feet and put your hands together to invite our speaker, Pastor Day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please be seated. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Let's give the worship team another hand uh, for leading us in that powerful time of worship. Amen. Praise God. Morning, everyone. Welcome to church. So good to see all of you guys here, both uh, you know, old friends and new friends. Uh, and so if you're visiting us for the very first time or you still feel like you're new and you hardly know anyone yet, please don't be in a hurry after service to rush off. But please have, stay back and uh, know, allow us to get to know each other uh, better uh, with the help of our espresso corner uh, with all those uh, delicious uh, home big goods. Uh, so a big hand to also the people serving on Espresso. Uh, let's, let's thank them in advance because I know sometimes you're just stuffing your face with all the good stuff that you forget, you know, uh, who made it. But thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, thank you, ushers. Um, before I get into today's message, just a bit of an 
uh, uh, you know, good news to announce is that uh, not only are we having homes this week, uh, which means on Wednesday, it's like our small group, we get together for a meal, for a time of Bible study, encouraging each other, inspiring each other, but we will also be multiplying some homes. Uh, so we will have a new location in Stratford. So if any of you uh, live near Stratford, have friends who uh, work there, live there, or something there, uh, invite them for homes, okay? Uh, so uh, you can speak to, uh, I think, uh, if you're interested to go to Stratford Homes, you can speak to uh, Jillian. Jillian, I'll raise your hand. Jillian, hey. Um, you can also speak to Michelle. Michelle, where are you? Michelle, raise your hand, okay? Uh, you can also speak to us or anyone. You can also speak to, uh, uh, I think, Kinon and Chris, because I think it's the, at their house. So they will give you the directions there. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so we have a location in, in Whitechapel. Uh, we have a location in uh, Stratford. We have a location in West London. Uh, so, yeah, somewhere in West London. For all you beautiful students and people who work on the west side, we still love you. Uh, and uh, you can talk to, I think, Pastor Cat for that or Sam for that. Uh, and of course, uh, just a, some slight housekeeping, uh, Camden and King's Cross will be merging uh, for a, a short while. So don't get too comfortable, guys. We're going we're gonna to merge uh, have some good fellowship, and then by God's grace, we can multiply out again. Amen? Because uh, it feels like, you know, the, 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 the West is covered, the East is covered, uh, uh, but we know we want to impact the North and the South and, and Central as well. Uh, so, yeah, so if, if you have a place, they don't mind opening up for us to do homes, uh, feel free to come and talk to us, or you just like to come and join us. Uh, that's awesome as well. Amen? Praise God. Uh, we want to just uh, get into God's Word today. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, today is also uh, the first, not the first Sunday, uh, but actually today will be uh, our launch of our second service again. I say again because we originally launched it two Sundays before uh, the whole lockdown happened in 2020. You, you know 2020, right? Like, uh, no? Like you know, a year where almost nothing happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, so, yeah, so we originally had plans to launch two services back then, uh, but it, of course, got interrupted. Uh, but it's all good. You know, God's timing is perfect. And uh, so today we want to uh, uh, kind of like relaunch it again. So a 2 p.m. service, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, I will be preaching uh, the same message again. Uh, but because the second service is a bit shorter, so can I, can I ask you to help me, okay? So I want you to respond uh, so that, you know, I get excited. So that I, I, I don't just repeat myself. Because if, if you look at me blankly, I will think that you don't understand. Then I tend to repeat myself because uh, I am, you know, old in that way. Uh, but if you're showing excitement and everything, it helps you to preach fast. And it's actually training me to preach more effectively, uh, especially for the second service. My wife said the loudest, yeah, you know, so... <laughs> Lord, help us. Um, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. Uh, because our second service is a little bit shorter. Uh, because it is in the afternoon. We, we don't want people to kind of like fall asleep. So, so help me. Amen. Uh, the better I do for this service, the better I will do for the next service. Amen. And so we are continuing a series called Tough Love. This is like a short series that we're doing. Uh, and maybe next week if I preach, it might be the last uh, part of this series. Uh, and we're focusing on some of the tougher to... Uh, follow and tougher to swallow teachings of Jesus. You know, as a church, we want everyone to mature. And so we don't just want to, you know, look at the, the positive parts of the teachings of Jesus. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Uh, but forsake some of the more ouch teachings. Uh, and, and this is important because, you know, uh, we need to be Christians that are mature enough to handle both, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the positive aspects and not to say negative, Negative, but, but but things that we uh, need to work on, you know, and, and to kind of have the maturity to understand that it's not really negative. It's, it's, it might be tough, but it's actually full of love. Let me give you an example. It's like, you know, uh, if any of you go to university, a good number of you do, and you have a final year project, you know, anyone you have a final year project, a group assignment or any kind, you know, some sort of essay you got to you know, hand it in. And can you imagine at the start of semester, your lecturer comes up to you and go like, I'm going to tell you this once, there will, not, there will not be an extension, there will not be a grace period to the deadline next year, yeah. right? Now, if you're immature, you can go in and go like, 
man, what kind of, you know, there's so much toxicity in this place, you know, where's the love? You know, this guy just comes up here and, and just tells me that, that he will not be merciful come next year. Oh, man, what, you know, what kind of place is LSE? Uh, what kind of place is uh, uh, UCL? What kind of place is uh, uh, Kings? Are you sure it's Kings? It's more like, you know, scum. Anyway, anyway whatever it is, right? I'm just joking. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do any rivalry here or, or am I? Uh, anyway, now, if you're immature, it, it's easy for you to get triggered. But if you're mature, you're actually realizing that actually this, while it's not nice to hear, it's actually for my benefit. And, and full of love, this lecture is telling me, hey, if I don't tell you this in advance, you will, be, you will procrastinate. And time will pass you by like that. And before you know it, you'll, you'll be begging me for an extension, but, but I will not give it to you. But instead of just surprising you with no extension, when you beg me for it, I'm letting you know in advance. So you do understand. So, so it, it takes you maturity to understand that actually this sounds tough, but it's actually, there's a lot of good in it. And then even more, the teachings of Jesus. Amen? And so we want to uh, dive into some scripture today. Uh, we're going to read from Mark chapter 10, uh, 17 to 31. Mark 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 17 to 31. And uh, before we read God's Word, let's pray. Lord, we thank You for Your Word. And God, right now, we just want to hear from You. So God, would You open up our hearts, open up our minds, so that we, Lord, we just want to receive from You. God, today, Your Word is living, and as we're about to read it, we pray that every word, every letter, every verse will come alive in our lives. God, today we're not here for a lecture. We're not looking for more information. But Lord, we desire transformation. Lord, change us, Lord. Remold us, Lord. Uh, 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 make us new again, Lord, from the inside out for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're taking down notes, the title for today's message is called It's Easier for Camels. It's easier for camels. And that might give you a clue to the passage of Scripture that we're reading at. Mark 10, 17 to 31. If you're there, can you hear a good amen? Amen. Fantastic. And uh, let's read together. Amen. Uh, now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honour your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come, Take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Ooh, ouch. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again as if they didn't hear him and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. It is easy to read this scripture and immediately go like, ah, not for me. 
not for me. This is, this is obviously scripture for businessmen. This is obviously scripture for rich people. You know, this is obviously scripture to, to, to dive into for the full gospel businessman fellowship. But not me. I'm just a student. I'm just, you know, a poor nobody. But you notice here that, you know, when we read scripture, it's so important for us to come in with humility and not with self-righteousness. You know, because the, the, the apostles didn't celebrate when this person walked away sad, they go like, who, well, who then can be saved? You know, because it's easy for us to look at this and kind of, you know, apply to world, real world context, especially with you been catching up with current news and uh, you've been hearing things like, you know, the, the Pandora papers dropping and you go like, what, all these rich and famous people not paying their fair share of taxes? Good, you know, sometimes you can get self-righteous and go like, yeah, 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 watch out, Bezos, uh, watch out, Buffett, uh, watch out, Gates, watch out, you know, and you begin to name all the people you dislike and go like, yeah, it's easier for a camel than you, you are more stubborn than a camel, <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy for us to kind of like go into this thinking that this is a criticism, this is an attack on the elite, but it's not. This is a criticism on the human condition. And so all of us here, we have something to learn. In fact, you know, all of us here right now, you're most likely holding it in your hand, some sort of electronic device that costs some of you a thousand pounds. Some of you close to a thousand pounds. Some of you more than a thousand pounds. Let's not look around to judge. But you know what I'm saying. So in, in, in a way, in context, you are a rich young ruler. Compared to, to, to the people in ancient times, you have more wealth in, in your hand, in that iPhone, in that you know, Samsung, whatever it is, that smartphone. There's, there's so much technology there. There's so much a wealth of information there. There's, there's so much computing power there. The clothes you wear is so much more, I don't know, branded and, 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 and you know, beautiful and colorful than what royals used to wear. Uh, you know, some of your net worth, you're probably equivalent to this rich young ruler in ancient times. So this, friends, what I'm trying to say is this. This applies to all of us. All of us. Amen. Whether you're studying, whether you're working, whether you're not working nor studying, <laughs> it applies to all of us as long as we are human. Amen. And so we want to get in a little bit deeper today and kind of like get past the fact that this doesn't apply to me. Amen. Because, you know, when I was younger in my faith, I, I, I would read this scripture and also younger in age, I would be like, oh, this is for the older people. These are for people who pay taxes. These are for people who, who you know, drive cars. You know, I'm just a poor student and I'm still in high school, blah, blah, blah. But no, no, no this applies to all of us. So we ask ourselves three questions every time we're doing this series. And, uh, you know, the three questions are, what, what does this, you know, this scripture, this passage that I just read, what does this tell us about Jesus? That's the first question that we ask ourselves. What does this tell us about who we are, right? You know, because obviously you read this and then if it cut us, ouch, and if it hasn't cut you yet, don't worry, it'll come. Uh, you know, it, it, it tells us it is an indictment on our human condition. So it's good for us to know what's wrong with us so that we can work at it. Amen? And of course, we want to not just be hearers of God's Word. You're not here for an ethics lecture. You're here to hear God's Word and do God's Word. Amen? And so we want to be hearers, uh, uh, not just hearers, but doers of God's Word. And so the last question we ask ourselves is, how do we apply this to our lives today? Amen. And these three questions, you know, you can use them for your own devotional walk with God. If you're ever uh, struggling to read the Bible and uh, every time you read, you fall asleep, you know, read and ask yourself this question. What did I just read? And of course, everything points to Jesus. Amen. So, so are you ready to, to dive in there? Amen. So the first question is this. I'm going to give you the answer and then I'm going to explain. Okay. So all of this, right? You know, it, it feels like a, a, a criticism on, on the rich and, and powerful, but it's so much more than that, let's first of all focus on Jesus. It's always good to focus on Jesus. So what does this tell us about Jesus? The answer is this. Jesus is everything, not just a good thing. This young man saw Jesus in a way of like, you know what? 
Uh, I, I, I've made it for myself. I've, you know, I've got, I've got, you know, wealth. I've got power. Most likely, he's good looking as well. You know, and and I'm a good person. I've done all this. I've been keeping all these commandments. So morally, I'm good. Religiously, I'm good. And 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 the way he approached Jesus looked like it was one more thing to check off his list. But the moment Jesus looked into his soul and told him, "Hey, sell everything." And follow me, he couldn't do it. In other words, he saw Jesus as just one more good thing, one more, you know, item to be added, one more accolade, one more thing for his CV, one more thing to conquer instead of everything. Because that's what Jesus is presenting himself as. He says, I am worth you giving up everything for. If you really see me as good, you know, and it's right there, you know, by all means, it's not as some people would like to believe that Jesus denying his godhood because he didn't say, I am not good. He didn't say, I am not God. But he posed the question. You know, if you, if you read Jesus, you know, he constantly answers questions with questions. You know, and, and so he says that, good teacher, what must I do? Be safe. And they go like, well, why, why do you call me good? And he's not saying that because I'm not good. You know, don't, don't put me in the same. He's saying, if Jesus is almost saying that if, if you truly understand that I am a good teacher, then you're saying that you're seeing the divinity in me. Then listen to what I have to say next carefully. Sell everything and follow me. But this person couldn't do it. Amen? My question to the rest of us this morning is this. You know, obviously, money and possessions was this young man's everything. What is your everything? And, and before you give me the religious answer of like, oh, of course, Jesus, my Lord and Savior. The right thing to ask yourself, the way, if you really want to, let's do a little experiment. To really find out what's your everything, let's look at how this young man responded when Jesus asked him to sell all that he had. And he says here, when he heard he, but he was sad, you know, my church, this is, but he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Some translations say he walked away depressed at the, at, at the imagination of losing that thing. So let me ask you again, what can you not live without? That is your everything. You know, last week, I preached about if you're Whatever it is that causes you to sin, whatever it is that causes you to stumble, do away with it. You know, maybe it was not a coincidence that on Monday, Facebook wasn't working, Instagram wasn't working, you know, like, like you know, WhatsApp wasn't working. So don't, don't mess around, okay? God's trying to tell you something. God's helping you even. You know, and for some of us, Monday, you were panicking. Ah! You know, you're on withdrawal, your hands were shaking. You know, and like a zombie, you, you kept refreshing, Kept refreshing your, your apps, kept refreshing because it was like, what is happening? Friends, if, if, if that was your case, then can I suggest that maybe Jesus is not your everything? Can you imagine? For some of us here, career is our everything. For some of us here, our families are everything. For some of us here, uh, you know, marriage is everything. Friends, can I tell you that life is more than your job? Life is more than your studies. Life is more than your wealth. Life is more than marriage. And all the single people say, okay, not enough. It's true. It's true. Do you know that Jesus never says, and everyone must get married? No, no, it is that everyone go into the world and make disciples of men. That's the calling of Jesus. Following Jesus is everything. No, you know why marriage is not everything? Because if marriage was everything, Jesus would have gotten married. But he didn't get married. To prove a point, there's nothing wrong with singlehood. Because it's not everything. Having children is not everything. Having, you know, uh, wealth is not everything. Jesus is everything. Friends, when you close your eyes, if you can imagine your life without Jesus, then he's not your everything. So friends, this morning before we start thinking that this applies only to rich people. No, we are that rich person. And we've got to check ourselves. My word. You know, you know, for some of us, internet is everything. Sleep is everything. 
you know, being a lot of us Asians, food is everything. But friends, it cannot be. Because food cannot satisfy you like how Jesus can. Relationship cannot satisfy you like how Jesus can. You can come from a broken family, but even your broken past is not everything. I believe that's a word for somebody here. You've been living with a baggage of regret. You've been living with a baggage of trauma. Your trauma is not everything. Your past does not write your future. Jesus writes your future. When you have Jesus, you have everything. When you don't have Jesus, you have nothing, even if you have everything. So that's the question we got to ask ourselves. Is Jesus your everything or is He just a good thing in your life? Friends, come on. Come on. The second thing is this, okay? I, I, I hope that, you know, I, we'll, we'll come back to that, but the second thing is this, because I, I know I got a bit fierce, so let's, let's change the mood. <laughs> so what does this tell us about who we are? Because it is cutting at us, right? Friends, does your world crumble without Jesus? Or do you secretly wish that you had no Jesus in your life? Ooh, have you been there before? Oh, I wish I wasn't a Christian. Question two, what does this tell us about who we are? Answer, we think this is a warning for rich people, but God is warning us against the spiritual power of money. Now, is this interaction with Jesus not about money? No, it is about money. That there, 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 there is the human condition to address, and there's also the money issue to be addressed. And we read this, like I said, we can go like, ah, oh, it's, you know, it's for the rich. I'm not rich. I'm just middle income. You know, I'm just middle income trying my best to climb up the ladder. You know, so this warning doesn't apply to me. When I make my first million, then I'll revisit this scripture. You know, when, when I strike it big, then I'll revisit this. But friends, I'm here to tell you, the, the scripture is here to tell you that whether you realize it or not, money has spiritual power. Let me just break it down and... and, and then help us to realize this in a more harmless way. When you see more money in your bank account, does it make you happy? It has power over you. When you see less money, do you feel sad? It has power over you. When you are stressed out, do you shop? It has power over you. Shopping suddenly becomes like prayer and intercession. <laughs> the more you shop, the better it makes you feel. The more peace it makes you feel. Right? If you have money, friends, I tell you, it gives you confidence. Have you been there before? You're standing outside a fancy pan restaurant and you go like, oh, I'm not even sure I can order, what? Four, four Red Bulls for 44 pounds. Like, what's this? Like, <laughs> and, and then, but if you have a lot of money, you can walk into anywhere. And even if they go like, sir, you must be dressed to party and you can go in, not dressed to party, but it says, but my wallet is here to party. They'll be like, right this way, sir, right this way. <laughs> and, and do you know what I'm saying? Right? Because if we know that if we have enough money, we can walk into any hotel and get ourselves the best room. If we know that we have enough money, we can, we can go anywhere. If, if, we have, if we know that we have enough money, even if we don't have a, 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 a degree, we know that our future is smooth sailing. Do you see the power? Do you see the power that money has over you? And Jesus here is warning us, saying that money, you know, that there is something about money that is that is beyond just currency, that it, 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 it has a control over us. It has an influence over our emotions, our mental health, our physical future. In fact, Jesus, in, in this other scripture, let's turn to it, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus was warning us about the power of money because this is like the, the only time Jesus ever put something else to, to almost be on the same level. I say almost, not the same, but almost the same level as God. He says, no one can serve two masters. Jesus was not mincing his words. He was giving money in a way, its proper definition. It, it is like a type of master. And some of us, we, we, we go Monday to Friday to serve that master. But, but, but this is not 
how we should live our lives. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon was almost this spiritual title uh, towards money. And almost Jesus kind of like hinting that, that there's more than just, money's not just, you know, the pound or dollar or yen or, or whatever currency that, 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 that's big and strong. And no, no, there, there, is, there is this spiritual battle that happens. There's a spiritual dimension to money. It's called mammon. And be careful not to serve mammon. And this is important for us because money many times becomes almost like a false god. Right? Jesus can heal. Well, with money, I can, I can buy the, the best health care. No, Jesus can, can give us peace. Yeah, with enough money in my bank account, I can have peace too. Oh, oh Jesus, you know, he, 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 you know, he writes our future. Yeah, money writes my future. And yet Jesus is trying to tell us that, hey, be aware. Be aware. And the key you know, uh, towards this, it, well, let me give you another one before I move on. Money also, in a way, it affects our value system. And it messes our value system. Right here is, is another layer. Let's go back to that statement because I know some people get hung up by that statement. You know, oh, did, did Jesus really proclaim himself as God? Don't you see it here? He says no one is good except God. Do you know what Jesus was also attacking? He was also attacking this young man's warped value system. He was trying to remind this young man that, you know, you, you know, you practice the commands, so you should know this. There's only one who is good, and that's God. So how come you're going around using good like, like it is something that you can refer to anything as you wish? In other words, Jesus is hinting that while you think you're in control, something is actually controlling the way you look at what is worth what in the world. It's warping your value system. And when you look at the world we live in today, the, the value system of the world is warped. Why is that a problem of human trafficking? Because someone decided that a person's human worth can be reduced to money. That's mammon. And we are, while not all of us are affected, but we are affected. Like the examples I gave earlier. So we gotta, we got to wake up, friends. Turn to your neighbor and say, wake up. Amen? Wake up. Money is such a, it's, it's such a, you know, the, the, the seduction of money is so real. In Mark chapter 8, verse 36, Jesus says this, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And we can look at this and go like, okay, okay, got it. Don't lose my soul. No, no, no. Jesus is also here warning to say that, do you know it's so easy to lose your own soul? And because you're gaining, you're gaining, you know, you're, you're, you're winning in the world. And, and, and not realizing that you're, 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 you're slipping away. And God is trying to wake us up and say that, come on, friends, don't let money be the God of your life. Don't make decisions based on money. And a lot of us, unfortunately, are you really going in a bit, ouch? We do. So many times we counsel people who are graduating. Oh, pastor, pastor, which job should I take? We know what they're actually saying. They're basically asking us for some sort of justification or blessing upon their decision to choose the job that pays them more. Pastor, Pastor, I don't know which job to take. You know, this job pays so well, but I have to work on Sunday. I have to be away from church. You know, but this job, you know, it pays okay, but I'll be in London. I'll still be in Bristol. I'll still be in Edinburgh. You know, I'll still be, you know, it's just five minutes away from my house, so it doesn't pay. But this one... It requires me to move to the other side of the world, but it pays so much more. And all fear is this, that yeah, you can move to the other side of the world, but, but will you also lose God in the process? 
it is not a, by chance that God planted you into a, a community of faith and there is strength in this community of faith. And can't you see that, that, that money is trying to draw you? And if you say yes to this, it, you can, it's easier for you to say yes to the next thing and next thing and the next thing. And before you know it, you know, Jesus is saying that you know, losing your soul, it's not like the more money you, you, you earn, the more beastly and demonic you become. You know, that's what we like to believe. That's why we believe all the conspiracy theory that all the rich people are demonic and evil. It's not. They're nice people, I'm sure. It's not like, you know, oh, the more money I have, the, oh, why is my legs, you know, so crooked, you know, it looks like a hoof now, you know? You know, oh, what, no, oh, now that I've got more money, why is there a little horn jutting out from the corner of my head, you know? You know, why is my voice suddenly, you know, like changing and, you know, like, like you know, it's like you're going from like, oh, I've got more money now, you know, and, and, and my, my voice is coming. No, no, it's, it, Jesus is saying that it is, you, you can gain and you will feel like on top of the world, but spiritually speaking, you are lost. Point number three, we talked a lot about the problems. And I want us to have some maturity today because, you know, I'm not here to tear you apart. It can sound like I'm doing that, but I'm not. Because like I said, this applies to all of us. It's, not, it, it's about money. It's also not just about money. It's about where is Jesus and what worth do we put on Jesus? Is He everything or just a good thing? Amen. Question number three is this. How do we apply this to our lives today? Here's the antidote. We must embrace sacrificial living. What was Jesus' instruction to this young man? Let's go to verse 21 again. Sometimes we focus, because again, money has so much value in our life, so we focus on the sell all your possessions. But actually, it doesn't stop there. Sell all your possessions, give. And, and, and Jesus is not like, He's not ignorant to our needs. And He's telling us, no, sell, give to the poor. And, and you will have treasure. It will look like you're, you're doing the dumbest thing and giving it all away, but you will have treasure, treasure in heaven where moth cannot eat. You will have treasure and come, take up the cross and follow me. Do you know that the cross is the ultimate representation of sacrifice? And Jesus is saying that, the, 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 you know, he, he, and Jesus is not, you know, Jesus is, he's a genius. And he's not ignorant towards our need for financial provision. In fact, you know, it says there that, you know, no one, because when Peter said, oh, Jesus, we left everything. And Jesus said, hey, no one. No one who leaves, you know, goes on leaves, father, mother, wife, children, who leaves everything, leaves their land, leaves their house, will not receive a hundredfold in this lifetime. So, so you're going to be blessed, friends. <laughs> you know, you're going to be blessed. Jesus knows, and He will provide for you in this lifetime. And everyone who wants to receive God's provision in this lifetime, say? Amen. Amen. Everyone who wants to receive it a hundredfold, say? And the key towards the hundredfold, key towards this, is true sacrificial living. And what Jesus is saying is this, that, you know, following me takes sacrifice. So, if money has this influence over us, and if I can borrow like a, maybe an, in, you know, imperfect language, but, but it's like the world that we're living in. There's something floating in the air. And, and it affects us, it could, you know, viruses, flu, and whatnot, you know, of various types. And Jesus is saying that the key towards combating all of this is true sacrificial living, which means that every time you sacrifice for Jesus, you're building spiritual antibodies against mammon. You're building up spiritual resistance against the, the, the spiritual battle uh, uh, between your soul and the world and money that pulls us in different directions. You know, and, and I'm not saying that, that we don't struggle. We all struggle. I'm not knocking anyone down. You know, praise God if you got money. You know, and, 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 and it's not, nothing wrong with money, but, but if we just focus on money, then money will, will, will steal our hearts. But if you focus on Jesus, then you can manage money. And so Jesus is saying that, I want you to live sacrificially. 
I want you to sell all you have and follow me and follow after my example. You know, do, do, you, do you know why I chose this scripture? I chose this scripture not because this incident wasn't recorded in any of the other gospels. It is, but, but there was, you know, I, I chose this because this, this included one of the most gracious response that Jesus gave, which is again in verse 21. Then Jesus, looking at this young man, my translation says, loved him. Loved him. Jesus looked at this young man and kind of like knew the challenge that he was about to give, but loved him. And says that, sell. You know, one thing you let go your way, sell everything, and you know, we, we, we've been down that track. But let's not forget that Jesus could look at this man that loved him. In other words, he's almost saying that, I feel you, brother. I, I'm not asking you to do something that I've not already done myself. See, while Jesus didn't sell his possessions to give to the poor, maybe physically he did. Maybe he sold off his carpentry business, if he was a business at all. But one thing for sure, he left heaven. And heaven contained more riches than we can even humanly understand. We think riches is just dollar and cents, but no, real riches is friendship and love. That's real riches. Some of you, you, you might come from a poor family, but the family is filled with so much love. That's a rich family. And Jesus, you know what he left? He left the presence of God. He left heaven. He left everything to come to earth for us. And so Jesus, when he challenges young men to be sacrificial and in turn challenge all of us to be sacrificial, he's saying that I'm not demanding you of something that I'm not already doing myself. In fact, I'm asking you to follow after me. Follow in my example. And when you begin to, to sacrifice, you begin to tap into the power and the reality of God. Because, you know, it, it's like the saying like, you know, if, if you want to get to know someone, you know, begin to do things together, right? You know, that, that's like a dating tip for you there. You know, if you, if you like, you know, a girl in church or a guy in church, you know, just start doing things together, the right things, okay? Don't, 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 don't come up to me pregnant and go like, well, you told us to do things. No, no, the, the, the right things, like, you know, like shared activity, you know, if, you, if, you, if, if you're, you know, kind of like checking out, oh, no, that guy looks like his potential, but I'm not sure. Uh, let me maybe find out. What does he, oh, he likes uh, parasailing? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, if you, if, you, if you don't like parasailing, they go, oh, I, can't, I can't, I can't. Like, you, you walk away depressed, sad, like this young man. Uh, but if you go like, you know what, he looks like he might just be worth me taking up parasailing. And as you both parasail, you both become adrenaline junkies. And, 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 and you bond over your common, you know, or it could be like, oh, wow, you know, that girl loves baking. Let me take up baking so that we can have some things in common. And, you know what I'm saying? So why I'm saying this is when you, when you partake in sacrificial living, you're partaking in fellowship with Christ. And the sacrifice is, is more than just giving us resistance towards money. It's power to draw us closer to God. Friends, I guarantee you, if you begin to sacrifice, if you begin to use sacrifice as your, as your value system, uh, your life will be transformed. I tell you, you know, your giving will go up the next level. Suddenly, it's not about, oh, should I give, should I not give? Technically, I'm a student, so I don't need to tithe. Or oh, technically, I'm an adult, but then, you know, the government already took my tax, so how much should I tithe? Should it be before tax or after tax? No, no, the question you got to ask is not before tax, after tax, 10% or whatever percent. It's, was that a sacrifice? Because if it wasn't a sacrifice, money has more power over you. But if you're giving, ah, sacrifice, guess what? You're partaking with Christ. And, it's, and it overflows to everything. Do you know that to live for Christ is sacrificial? To forgive means you got to sacrifice. Sacrifice your face. Sacrifice your right to be angry. Right? Oh, that person. I hate that person's face. You know, what's he doing? He's walking near, he's walking near. And that person comes and goes like, brother, I'm so sorry. I 
you choose to forgive and say that, oh, nah, don't, don't worry about it. There's nothing. I shouldn't be that mad about you stepping on my shoe anyway. So, you know. <laughs> Do you know what you're sacrificing? You're sacrificing your ego. You're sacrificing your right. Your right to complain. Your right to gossip. Because it's, it's done. It's sacrificed. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, you're, you're sad. And, 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 and I'm just using that as a harmless example, but some of us, it, it, you know, you've been really hurt. You've been really hurt by people. And to, to forgive, it's like, ah! but that's when you realize that, man, Jesus has forgiven me of everything. Jesus, in fact, the reason I'm forgiven is because Jesus sacrificed. And without his, not just his obedience, but his sacrifice, I wouldn't be forgiven. So now that I'm forgiven, how can I not sacrifice? And, and, and how can you follow Jesus and, and not sacrifice? Jesus is sacrifice embodied, made flesh. Amen? In fact, you can't love someone without sacrificing. If you're in a relationship and they say, I love you, but they don't never sacrifice, they don't really love you. But if you're going to sacrifice, you find that your spiritual life comes alive. I still remember years ago, there was uh, someone who came up to me after church. This was like a brilliant person. I visited his house before. He's got books. You know, he's like a type of person who go like, you know, I read a book a day, you know, and you go like, I kind of believe you. Uh, a lot of books, you know, very brilliant, you know, da 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 you know, you know, making a good living out of himself, living in London. And then he came to me one day, go like, you know, Pastor, now that I become a Christian, I've been reading the Bible, and you know, I just I just feel like it's not it's not speaking to me. And at that moment, that's filled with the Holy Spirit. I just asked this person, I go like, Brother, can I ask you a question? When you read and when you read about, let's say, giving to the poor or giving to God, do you just read or do you do it? Silence. And I realized, okay, brother, if you learn to sacrifice, if you just read God's Word and, let, and, and partake in God's Word through sacrificial giving, sacrificial living, the Word of God will come alive. Friends, it's the same. Are you... You know, <laughs> King David says that I will not give to the Lord that which costs me nothing. We're standing here today because it costs someone something. You know, we're able to get into the presence of God and worship because the worship team sacrificed. They think they're full-time musicians. No, we're not, we're, not, we're not that kind of church where I can pay them to become full-time. You know? No, they've got jobs. They sacrifice. They have commitments. And yet they go like, Saturday morning, I'm going to come anyway. And we're going to practice. You know? And some of them, they live such busy and hectic lives. Monday to Friday, they're working. And yet, you know, by all means, Saturday, that's their off day. And yet they go like, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice so that, so that people can experience God. Do you see what I mean, friends? Nothing good is not birthed out of sacrifice. In fact, ask your mom, was it a sacrifice to birth you into this world? Even if you... Yes, the answer is yes, okay? Pain. You know, if we can get to the specifics, they, they sacrifice their body. Some of them, you know, you look at your old, old pictures of your mom, you go like, whoa, mom, is this you? You look like a model. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea how much I sacrificed to have you. <laughs> and that's not including the other things, the career that they had to sacrifice. Uh, do you see the power of sacrifice, friends? So the Bible is trying to tell us, Jesus is trying to tell us that there is a power in sacrifice that can help you. So how do you make decisions when money is trying to pull you in a million one direction? Whichever is most sacrificial, that's most probably the one that God wants you to partake on. Because we've got to understand that there is also a tug of war, a spiritual tug of war between money and so we've we got to we got to pull back. 
not with all strength, but with the strength of sacrifice, through the power of sacrifice. Amen? And so, you know, I just invite the worship team up. I know we talked a lot. Maybe it was a little bit more intense today. But I would believe that God wants to minister to us. And in a while, I want us to, I want us to meditate on this. This is God's Word. The question we've got to ask ourselves is, is Jesus my everything? Is He the source of my emotional strength? my mental resilience, or have I been relying on something else? Friends, I can tell you, nothing satisfies, nothing heals, nothing completes you like Jesus. Have you been overly influenced? Has money become your master? Do you find yourself talking more about money? Do you find yourself getting more excited about money than God? Do you find money impacting your level of confidence more than Scripture and God? Do you find money affecting your peace and your ability to sleep more than God? Do you find your level of optimism and hope going up and down, being volatile, turbulent, like money? Or are you going to the one who calmed the storm? This morning as you gave, Was it sacrificial? Friends, when you begin to understand the power of sacrifice, you won't worship the same way again. Some of us here, we, you know, we got to sacrifice, I don't know, our ego, our, our, our skin in the game. Sometimes you, the reason why we don't sing is because we go like, oh, I don't want people to know that I can't sing. In other words, you're, you're more worried about other people's perception towards you. Maybe that's something you need to sacrifice. Sacrifice means to lose something. Friends, Jesus gave it all up for us and is inviting us to do the same and is promising to take care of us. The question is, would we begin to model our life. Don't just say, I want to have a good Christian life. What's a good Christian life? It, there's no such thing. But there is a sacrificial life where we live allowing God to be the final authority and the only authority, the Alpha and the Omega in our lives. Okay, I invite you to stand and let's begin to just reflect on everything that God's been saying to us this morning through worship. You know, as we worship, I pray that the presence of God will begin to speak to you, move you, and begin to help you to respond. And if you're going to respond, why don't you just begin to sing and worship Him and, and use this song like a prayer to God again. Amen.
give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. God, we don't just want to respond to you emotionally, but God, we want to respond to you truthfully. So God, I pray, Lord, help us, Lord, to, to, to worship you like how you deserve to be worshipped. Sacrificially, not just once a week, but every day. Saying no to our flesh and saying yes to you. Help us, Lord, to see you not just as a thing, not just as religion, but, Lord, as everything. So, God, I pray, Lord, for those of us that are wrestling with this message, I pray that your grace will help us to win. Win against our flesh win against the spiritual forces at work in our lives. And God, I pray Lord, that from today onwards Lord, help us to love sacrifice and to love you with our sacrifices. Our sacrifices of praise, our sacrifices of at work, our sacrifices of giving, our sacrifices of time, talent, because Lord, you are worth it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we close today's service, I just want to give people here an opportunity. You, know, you heard the words of Jesus today. And friends, I want you to know that God loves you. God loves you. The only reason why Jesus was able to challenge us is because he he was the real deal he lived it all he's the son of god that came down from heaven 
and rescued us from our path of self-destruction. He saw us so lost, so broken, being thrown around, being influenced by all these negative forces and He stepped into our lives. And so friends, today if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling like you don't know what's right or wrong anymore, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the answer. He's the only one that can satisfy. He's the only one that can set you free. He's the only one that knows you. Would you give your life to know Him today? If that's you and today you'd like to invite God into your heart, you admit that you are lost and you need God, and you believe and you want to believe Jesus, that He is the way, the truth, and the life, that He is the answer, He is the solution, then today, friends, I want to encourage you to call upon His name. The Bible says when you call upon the name of Jesus, when you cry out to Him and says, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, help me. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, forgive me. The Bible says He will hear and He will respond. Whoever who calls upon Jesus will be saved, the Bible says. So friends, why don't we do this together? And, uh, you know, we're going to together cry out to Jesus in the form of this, you know, sample prayer. And, and the power is not in the words, but in the sincerity in our hearts. And so friends, even if you don't know Jesus, but you feel like as if today a light switch has turned on in your mind, in your heart, and, and, it, and it, just, it just makes sense. You just, or you just feel compelled to... To, to, to believe and to give in to Jesus. Friends, that's God knocking at the door of your heart saying, let Him in. And so would you let Him in? If you want Him in, let's pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus thank, you thank you for paying the ultimate price for, paying the ultimate price for, my, sins for my sins by dying on the cross, dying on the cross for me. I receive your love love and forgiveness forgiveness and eternal life life by faith. faith. Come into my heart heart and life and and be my Lord Lord and my Savior. Savior. Fill me me with your Holy Spirit Spirit. in Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 If you, if you, if that was your first time praying that prayer, if, you're, if that's your first time inviting Jesus into your heart, the Bible says that you've been born again. Your past has been wiped clean. You are a new creation in Him. Or maybe you feel like you've been so far away, but today you feel like God calling you home. Welcome home. And God's going to do a new work in you. Amen. You know, so, you know, please don't leave the day without telling someone about your decision and even our friends joining us online, please, you know, reach out to us. We'll love to help you uh, in this new journey of faith that you're embarking on. Uh, right now, I'm just going to invite uh, Justin up. He can close us in our service today. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that a powerful reminder and in, in how important it is to uh, make God our everything. Um, before we close, can I lead us in a closing prayer? Let's pray. Dear Father, we pray for your covering and care to come upon our entire church family. We pray for pastors Kenneth and Sandra, all our elders, pastors and church plant coordinators both here and abroad, as well as all our leaders who serve your house so faithfully week after week. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide all our needs according to your riches and glory especially the wisdom to continue to be a church that's in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength and let our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I just invite all of you to lift up your hands as I declare the benediction over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Church is officially over, but feel free to stay, uh, stay around to you know meet someone new and have some refreshments on us as well. Amen.
Not a moment could escape, no darkness could invade. Where else could I run? Lead me back to you. Not a shadow of a doubt. Go beyond my wandering thoughts. Won't you search my heart, oh Lord? Draw me close to you. And Jesus, I surrender all to you. Savior, come and change me. Not a moment could escape, no darkness could invade. Where else could I run? Lead me back to you. Not a shadow of a doubt, go beyond my wandering thoughts. Won't you search my heart, oh Lord? Draw me close to you.
will give you all glory.